Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 56. Hey guys, welcome back. Today's going to be another short episode, only because I haven't really done a lot of crochet. Um, I feel like after the fair prep and all that, and working on so much stuff, and the Mandala Madness, I've just kind of like, I haven't known what to do with myself. I told Devin that I need to start another large project just to work on in between my little ones. But um, Devin and Jesse just left to go to a cookout. Um, so I stayed home to film since I would have some quiet time here and I could sit in the living room again because I did like having the background, you know, something cute. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and hop in. I've got kind of three finished objects, one uh, getting there almost finished, and then I'm gonna talk about some cows and things like that and Etsy, my Etsy shop update. Uh, then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start updating the shop tomorrow and work on it throughout the week. I was gonna do it just Friday. But I got to thinking about it, and Etsy won't let you make a bunch of listings at once. You have to make one at a time. And when I finish all the bags that I'm making throughout this week, there's going to be like 40 plus uploads. And I don't want to have to do all those on Friday. <laughs> so I'm going to do for sure some tomorrow, which is Monday the 17th. And um, probably throughout the week, add some more bags just as I make them. But okay, uh, like I said, I have two finished objects, kind of, almost three. Technically three, I just haven't woven in the ends. So I'll get to a Halloween one first. Uh, if, you're in the member, if you're a member of the Facebook group, you've probably seen this. And I've also entered it into two cows. But it is a cute little um, Frankenstein. What are these called? These are called rag dolls, I think. But here it is. It's kind of gloomy. It's raining outside here. And this is the best light I can get. I'm planning on buying some actual lighting soon. But it's going to be a little while. Probably around Christmas time. I overstuffed them a little, but that's alright. Jesse loves him. But this part down here is brown. You just can't see it because of the sunlight. There you go. And then green and black up there. Um, the pattern is called Frankenstein Ragdoll. It is a paid for pattern on Ravelry or you can go to the website and get it for free. And it is written by Maria's Blue Crown. She's the same person who wrote the blanket pattern behind me, which is also a paid for pattern on Ravelry or you can go to her website and get it for free. And her website, I think it's just mariasbluecrown.com. Let me check before I say that. Yeah, mariasbluecrown.com. And that's yeah, she has a lot of free patterns on there. Christmas ones and all kinds of stuff. But she uh, made this pattern in collaboration with a crochet along that's going on. And I'll tell you about that in a little bit. But the yarns, I think I used all scrap for him. His brown pants. Um, what is the color? It's Red Heart Super Saver. I can't remember the color. It's like chocolate or something. No, that's there with love. It's the dark brown super saver. The green is actually mainstays green. It's really similar to Red Heart Super Saver Spring Green, which is one of my favorite greens, but for some reason they quit selling it in store. You can still buy it on websites, but it's not in store. And I'm the kind of person who likes to shop like in person. I only online shop if I have to. <laughs> and then it's Red Heart Super Saver White and Black for his eyes and his uh, stitches and hair and his little mouth. <laughs> I kind of wish I'd made his mouth smiley, but eh, whatever. But yeah, he's just a rag doll, so that means he's made in panels. He's a front and back panel, and then you make the arms and legs separately and sew them on as you're closing the panel, and then his eyes are sewed separately on there. You could probably make them out of felt too if you wanted. And this up here is stitch work that you work. These are called drop stitches. If you're not familiar with that, it's where you do a single crochet, a double crochet, half double crochet, whichever. Uh, instead of the stitch that you're working on, you would go down a couple rows and work into a stitch you've already worked in, and it gives it that cool effect. <laughs> Those are really neat to add into patterns to give you some pizzazz, and in this case, it looks like hair, <laughs> and it's also on the back. I did make him a little fat. Usually, rag dolls are um, not very stuffed at all, but um, eh, you know, it's okay. Jesse loves him. He has, he's been playing with him a lot since I made him, and I didn't stuff his legs or his arms. I just left them floppy. And it's just stitched on, and his uh, stitches are just stitched on. <laughs> yeah. I think another cute thing to add to this would be like those little, like crochet little bolts to put down here. Because he has bolts. Are they on his head? They're on the top of his head, I think. Yeah, they're, they'd be up here. I think that'd be a cute little add-on for it. But yeah, this is a really quick pattern. I made it, I made it in a day, but I didn't, you know, work on it all day. I worked on it on and off throughout the day. I finished both the panels while Jesse was taking a nap one day, and he usually takes a nap for like an hour, hour and a half, and uh, it's all single crochet except for this part up here, 
and the eyes the big eye is double crochets because <laughs> the eye patterns are exactly the same it's just you do single crochet and double crochet i think that's what it was yeah but yeah super cute and easy you can pop it out and use it as a decoration i would put him up there and those are only up there because i put them there usually i would have all three because the cat or not the cat the bat is missing it's not up there because jesse always knocks them down and runs off with them but this is usually laying around the living room somewhere for him to play with i'll just do it <laughs> But yeah, like I said, that is Frankenstein Ragdoll by Maria's Blue Crown. I always want to say Canyon. Crown. <laughs> Alright, my next finished object I didn't use pattern for. I just winged it. And it's um, Dish Scrubbies. I hailed together um, Walmart's brand cotton. I can't remember what it is. It's either Peaches and Cream or something like that. And then I held um, it together with the bubblegum colorway of Red Heart scrubby or whatever it's called this one's been used it's clean right now i just got it out of the dryer earlier and this is another one that i made this is the one i haven't woven in the ends to but um yeah so this one's been used and it's shrunk because i'm pretty sure these were the same size and this one's just i just threw it floor this one just shrunk from being used and washed but i actually really loved it it worked really well because it's it's rough enough to clean but not rough enough to damage pans with lining on it like, I usually don't use pans with lining on it because I hate that non-stick lining. I would rather not even deal with it. I love cast iron, which is right there. You can't see it because it's so dark, but I like cooking with cast iron. It's kind of a learning curve, but I'm getting there. But, uh, yeah, and with cast iron, you're not supposed to use soap. So, the stuff like this is really good for getting food off of um, before you treat your iron after wash or rinsing it, I guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I kind of want to make... Because this is like, like I said, it's rough, but not like horribly rough. And this one I've not used yet for dishes, but it's like, I could totally see myself using this as a washcloth. Because it would be abrasive, but not like, it wouldn't damage my skin, but it would help. What is that called when you, you, um, it's got a name. What is it? Y'all are probably yelling it at me right now. I seriously can't remember what that's called. But you know what I mean, where you, um what is that called it's gonna kill me someone tell me what that's called in the comments where you use slightly abrasive stuff to get dead skin off your body i can't remember what that's called but uh i think that would actually feel really good because like just rubbing this on my arm it actually feels really good like with soap and water i think that would be kind of almost like massage like massage ish <laughs> but yeah so i might actually try to make an, a bigger one to try out in the bathtub i've seen people use um make like mitts for the bathtub out of cotton and scrubby yarn and this is like really nice this isn't like the original scrubby yarn that came out the original scrubby yarn was like really rough it was almost like plastic <laughs> which like those plastic sponges you know that people use but this is actually really soft i like this i think it was discontinued though because i bought it on clearance maybe they still sell it online but they definitely don't sell it in store anymore but yeah, so I made two of those, <laughs> and uh, I'll probably make a whole bunch more because I did enjoy it, and I, I got, I think, two or three balls of this. I know I got a purple and a pink one, and I think I might have got a blue one. I'm not sure when it was on clearance, but I, it don't take a little bit to make these two. I still got a ton. That's all of my finished objects. Um, I didn't really crochet a lot this last week. Been really busy. You know, my mom had her surgery and uh, been visiting her and stuff like that, and then Jesse's been terrible toing a lot <laughs> and I've just been busy around the house you know um just doing house stuff you know cleaning and cooking and getting more things organized for uh I would guess I would say my business because you know YouTube and Etsy are both doing really well so I am trying to get stuff in line for that you know working on my taxes and stuff getting all that stuff ready for tax time and uh just haven't crocheted a lot so I'm gonna try to definitely crochet more coming up now that I'm getting some things figured out I've only got one whip that I'm working on I what last week I did work on the uh, corner to corner a little but I haven't picked it up this week uh, I wanted to but every time I thought about it we had already left and I forgot to get it because like I said that's usually my car project or sitting at someone else's house project but the one thing I did work on is another uh, Halloween crochet along project and it is a made made by Mary um, crochet along that she's doing she does them all like almost all the time there's only one or two months out of the year that she takes a break but I'm working on her own pattern it is called the vampire amigurumi and she also calls it Vladimir the vampire but um 
The first week I had to get his feet, his legs, his hands, and his arms done, which is what I had last week. I'm pretty sure I showed it to y'all. I only had one arm done though, I think, yeah. But now I've got all of that done, plus I've got his body done and I'm halfway done with his head. He has a weird shape. Let me squish him up a little bit. There we go, a little bit better. But yeah, here he is. You can't see his feet that great because they're, he looks like he's got boots on. And then I finished his legs and his belly and chest. I did finish his arms. I stuffed his hands, but not his arms. I kind of wanted them that way. <laughs> I could have put some stuff in there, but I just left them unstuffed. And I am working on his head, and he has a dowel. It's sticking probably like three inches into his body, and it'll be about three inches into his head, just to give him, once I stuff it, it's not stuffed around his neck. It'll be sturdy. His head won't be real wobbly once I had the stuff in. But yeah, uh, I stopped working on his head actually yesterday because I needed to see if I had white felt to make his the white of his eyes. Because I couldn't remember if I had white felt. If I don't have any white felt, I'll just crochet ovals and then stick my safety eyes into them. But um, actually I got distracted cooking dinner after that. I never picked him back up. I'm using a stitch marker right here that Melody sent me last year during the um, Have Your Yarn Wish Granted thing. She, in she answered one of mine, Melody from Melody Crochet here on YouTube. Um, she sent me a bunch of these, and this is one of them. <laughs> and uh, this is with an elf hook. This is a paid-for pattern, but I think it's 30% off during the cow. Just so, you know, I think most of her patterns are usually 30% off. But still, <laughs> um, I'm using for his colors is Red Heart Super Saver black and white. And then his hands and his face is I Love This Yarn light gray. I think the pattern calls for a, a pale blue color, but, you know, obviously you can use any color you want. And I just thought the light gray would be a good, you know, dead vampire color. <laughs> and then his cape and bow tie and his little belt is going to be a uh, Red Heart Super Sailor Amethyst. And the cape will also have black on it. And then he has hair that will be black. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I'm really close to being done with him. All I got to do is finish his head, do his facial features and his ears and his cape. And he has a little bow tie and like a belt strip that will go around here. And he'll be done. I think there's five weeks in this cow, and this is the second week. So, uh, we're getting there. <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoy her giant amigurumis. I have made, I made the Easter Bunny one. I made the Santa one and the Elf one and then Vladimir. She's got a really cute turkey one that I want to make. I want to make Mrs. Claus because I need Mrs. Claus to go with Mr. Claus. Um, what else? She's got a witch one that I really wanted to make. That's the one I voted for for the cow, but everybody else voted for the vampire, which is fine. He's cool too, but I want to make the witch. She's got a bunch of them. I just want to make like all of them. <laughs> she's one of those, she's another designer, her and Heidi Yates. I, it's like my goal to own all of their patterns. I'm always trying to, you know, I buy their patterns when I have extra pattern money. And uh, anytime they have a coupon, I go and, you know, take advantage of their coupons to get either free ones or good percentages off. Because I love both of them and I want to own all of their patterns. <laughs> Heidi Smith, Heidi Smith, I just mixed her names together. Heidi Yates just came out with a scarecrow uh, garden flag and I cannot wait to get that. She made it uh, a garden flag and then you can turn it into a, like a scarecrow head if you wanted to make a scarecrow. And I'm definitely going to be buying that soon. <laughs> or getting it for free whenever she comes out for coupons. But yeah, that is my Vladimir so far. He might be done uh, by next week because even though the cow will split up for a few more weeks, I'll probably just go ahead and finish it since it's just little bits left that I need to do. And uh, that's, I always finish her cows soon because usually the last couple of weeks are just little parts and I just go ahead and do them all just to get it done. And plus the sooner I get them done, the sooner I can have them sitting out for Halloween. That is all of my uh, whips. Like I, let me see. Yeah, I haven't started anything else. I've got a list of things I need to start, and I need to start on some of them sooner rather than later. I've got to make Devin a Pikachu hat for Pokemon Community Days. Uh, i got to make my mom a shawl out of that knit crate yarn that I got uh, this month, yeah, for September. I'm trying to find the right pattern. I think I'm going to make her a Treasure Island shawl. I think that's what I've decided on from Hannah at the Cozy Cottage Crochet because I really like that pattern. And my mom really liked the pink one that I made. She wanted it, actually. <laughs> I couldn't give it to her, though, because it's my vacation yarn. So it's like a um, souvenir. But I think I'm just going to make her one of those with that green yarn. Because I think she'd like that. And I've got to make a afghan. I want to make a like this size uh, just couch afghan for um, someone. I can't say who because I don't think they watch this. But I know someone who knows them does. And the person who I know 
that they know <laughs> is the kind of person who would tell them <laughs> if that makes any sense but um it's going to be a christmas gift so i don't want i don't want to say anything else more than that because if i say anything else more than that it'll give it away but i will whenever i start it i will still show it because i don't think they'll know by looking at it who it's for but it's going to be um a cat afghan the cat stitch or whatever it looks like little cats sitting all together and i'm going to make it in shades of purple and then i think white i might i might make it some shades a couple shades of purple and a couple grays and then white because this particular person really likes purple and grays they're actually they're actually their wedding colors were purple and silver so i think i might throw like a light gray kind of like his head <laughs> in there with the purples and white just to like make kind of an ombre of cats <laughs> I, I know there's a few other things that i want to make i want to make a little advent tree i found a pattern it's a paper pattern i'll pop up an image if i can think of it and i'll link it below too in case you're interested but it's like a it's almost like an amigurumi christmas tree this advent calendar and you when you move the ornaments there's actually a hole there for you to put candy and stuff in i wanted to make that for jesse because i thought he would enjoy doing that every day but yeah anyways i'm going to talk about the uh, crochet alongs that i'm currently participating in in case y'all are interested i mentioned three of them last time and there's actually a fourth one that i completely forgot to mention so down below all four of these will be listed if you want to go check them out and do them um the first one is the underground crafter and that's the one that i made this cat for right here and also frankenstein that i just threw in the floor um he apparently bounced because he's not like in an obvious spot or he got up and ran off <laughs> but it's the underground crafter and it'll be linked below she's doing a let me look i got it pulled up it's like a five or six week crochet along let's see here one two three four five six seven week it started for september 5th and the last one starts on september or october 17th and then a week later it ends uh, i think that's what it is november 1st is when they're drawing the end of the giveaway and they'll be drawing the prizes after that um and like i said the black cat stuffy was the first one and that's actually her pattern that she wrote the woman who owns and runs underground crafter the other one was maria's blue crown um the, what is he called? I almost said vampire. I'm thinking about him. Frankenstein. And then the next one will be from Stitches and Scraps. And then Umbaka Designs. Snappy Tots. Creative Crochet Workshop. The Stitching and the Stitching Mommy will all be participating with patterns. And their patterns are usually paid for patterns on Ravelry. But if you go through their blogs or websites, you get them for free. And they're, they'll all be linked from the underground crafters website so what i did is i just added the cow page from the underground crafters website to my bookmarks bar bookmark bookmarks bar oh my god i can't say that <laughs> so that every you know i could just go check up all the updates from there i can go through her website and go straight to the other person's website to get the pattern but yeah i'm looking forward to it they're giving away a lot of cool stuff uh i really hope that i win the crochet hooks but they're giving away a crochet hook case like interchangeable crochet hooks, pattern books. I don't know if you'd be able to see. Whoop, I just unplugged it. Those crochet hooks that look like gemstones. I want those so bad. I want all of them. The the Etsy store that has that has a set that you can buy that is every single one of them together. It's like a hundred something dollars, but I want that so bad. I'm probably gonna end up buying some of those. And there's another crochet pattern book, a really cute gift um project bag with sheeps on it yarn of course <laughs> a bunch of yarn so there's gonna be quite a few renters it looks like i don't know how many i'm sure it says somewhere she's got a whole page of information about her crochet along so definitely check that out you get to enter like seven different times up to seven different times for each you know once for each pattern that you make like i've got two entries in right now so you have a good chance you know of winning some of these awesome prizes and i want the crochet hook so bad hope i win one the next um cr halloween crochet along is the made by mary one it's a facebook group you just you would just type in made by mary c-a-l um and it should bring it up it's mary smith's uh group you join the group and i'm sure she'll accept you pretty quickly <laughs> i can't remember i've been in there for like two years but um it's for the vampire right now but she does one just about every month like since this one will be done in the end of september so in october she might do a thanksgiving one because she has a few thanksgiving patterns or she might do another halloween one i don't know and then hopefully she'll do a christmas one and i hope it's not santa or the elf because i already got those i guess i can make another elf and just change the hair and stuff make it look different but uh i hope it's mrs claus because i don't have her yet 
<laughs> um, but yeah, you enter in. I don't know if she still does. She used to every week. She'd draw a couple winners to give them free patterns. She hasn't yet for last week. I don't know if she's just busy or if maybe she quit doing that. Because it's been a while since I participated in one of her cows. Just because over the summer I got real busy and just haven't done it. But I know for sure at the end of the cow, she does draw winners to get free patterns. And that's actually how I got most of my Mary Smith patterns is from free coupon codes that she shares. And the next um, Halloween crochet along is from Hillary's Hook Crochet Community, also on Facebook. Um, she, hers is using her own patterns that she wrote. You have to go buy one and then you make it any time between September to October, I'm pretty sure. Um, and enter it to win, I think, patterns code. <laughs> I should have read the, I'm just, I'm just doing it. I don't even know the, the, like, the prizes. But, um, I bought a pattern already. It's the stacking witch hats. I just haven't made them. You know, I've, I still got plenty of time to make them. And I might make more than one set. But, uh, she's also got a really cute, like, cat ghost pattern that I kind of wish I'd bought instead. But, I mean, I guess I could buy it too and enter both of them, maybe. I don't know. And the last Halloween uh, crochet along that I'm participating in is, and I'm hoping I don't say this wrong, it's Nicole's channel, The Rob Creations. I hope I pronounced that right. I don't want to mess people's names up. <laughs> but she's doing a Halloween along, and I can't remember the dates. So let me look. I got it pulled up right here. Chatter thread. There's already been a lot of entries in it. It's really cool to see other, I love seeing other people's entries to stuff like that gives you ideas and also gives you new patterns you know something you might not have known before okay she doesn't say the dates right there um she probably said it in her video i just can't remember i imagine it's september maybe some of october but it's any like halloween related stuff so i've been i've entered two things in it so far which is that cat and the frankenstein and then i will be entering him in it too when he gets done i'm pretty sure she'll be drawing two winners one from the chatter and one from the finished objects thread so that'll be cool that's all the current cows that i'm working on other than the cakewalk cow which is coming to a close you know it's september 16th so just a little under a month and the cakewalk cow will be wrapped up i've already i found some material that i'm going to order for the um project bags because I think for the two physical prize winners that I draw I'm going to send them each a project bag with some stuff in it and I found some cute cake material because I couldn't find any in stores uh the only one I could find I showed it months ago when the cow first started uh is cupcakes which I might still make bags out of that but I found a really cute one on Etsy that's actual cake material so I'm going to definitely be making that uh project bags for the winners all right the last thing I want to talk about today before I uh close this video <laughs> i'm sorry for the lighting too i can't i'm sure i've already said that but i'm gonna throw that in there again because it's kind of going in and out because it's so gloomy outside but is my shop update like i said tomorrow which is monday september 17th uh i'm going to probably tonight and then into tomorrow i'll be uploading some listings on there for halloween themed bags and notion pouches i've actually got to sell some more notion notion pouches tonight i've got the zippers already on them and all i just have to sew them closed i've only finished one which is right here <laughs> I finished this one yesterday just got the pumpkins on it and they all have black liners I didn't do anything crazy with liners I just went easy with black <laughs> this has got a purple zipper I thought it matched the purple pumpkin really cute they'll all be about the same size uh, which is big enough for regular crochet hooks like um, Susan Bates and all that scissors stitch markers whatever notions you have you want to stick in there to match your bags <laughs> And I've also made, let me get them out of my bag. I think I have eight finished and I've got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 more to make. I don't know if I'll get them all made this week, but I'm going to try to get as much of them as I can. Now, these are all Halloween, but I will have some autumn themed ones. I will be, um, I'll be making and uploading two, four, six autumn themed bags. And then I might try to get some more autumn-y material between now and after you know around Halloween I wanted to get Halloween ones up first because it's closer to Halloween and then for the rest of fall you know all up through November I'll be putting up some more autumn -y and probably some turkey ones because I found some really cute turkey material at Hobby Lobby that I kind of want my own bag out of and then I might make some bags for to sell but yeah I'll show you the bags real fast these are the ones that will be up in the shop tomorrow and I've got two of these ones so I'll just show you one and it's purple with ghosts on pumpkins it's a boxed bottom with and I changed my drawstrings I was using ribbon 
but I wanted something that was a little bit higher quality and wouldn't fray if someone needed to wash it. So I got this cord. It's called crochet cord. It's really good, it's thick, and I was able to melt the ends so that it wouldn't fray. And they work just as well, you know, it doesn't, it's not hard to, to cinch <laughs> and to pull out. It's still really smooth, easy to work with. But there's two of those ones going up. I love this material. This is like a vintage-y one. This is also a box to bottom bag. It's like Halloween vintage cards. It's what it reminds me of. I'm pretty sure it was because I feel like this right here is so familiar to me. This image of this ghost. I think it was a Halloween card at one time. These all have black insides because like I said, I didn't go fancy with the liners. I wanted something that would go, that I could get a lot of material that would go with all of these ones and black was the color. I would imagine orange would have probably went with most of them too. And then I got one candy cane. Candy cane. I did the same thing last year. These are not candy canes. These are candy corns. Candy corn one. Also a box bottom. I have them folded in a way that they're tucked in. That's why I was shaking it <laughs> to get it to come out. And then I have two of these, but one's a box bottom and one's just a squared bottom. This is the box bottom one. And they're, they got lines on them because I have them folded up in my fluffy bag to keep them clean and dust free while they're waiting to be purchased and sent to their forever homes. I like this pattern too. Really pretty. Okay, that's the regular one. This one's the one that's got, oh no, these do have box bottoms. Maybe it was one of the purple ones that had a square bottom. <laughs> I made a couple square bottom bags, but this is another box bottom bag. And these are all approximately 15 inches wide and 13 inches tall. And then this one matches the notions pouch that I have done. This is the one with a square bottom. Let me pop out the corners. Oh, I'm dropping everything. It's hard to tell when there's nothing in it, but it does have a squared bottom. But this matches the Notion pouch. <laughs> I think every one of these will have a matching Notion pouch. There's a bag missing right here. This one does, won't have any notion, notion pouches matching it until I buy more material. Because I don't know what I did. Normally, when I cut a yard, I can get two project bags, two notion pouches out of one yard of material. But for some reason, the way I folded this one, I cut it wrong. And I just have enough material to make two project bags. So I'll have to go back to the store. This is another square bottom one. And get some more of this material if anybody wants a uh, notion pouch. And this has the squared off bottom too. Now these are just regular drawstring bags and my Notion pouches. The Notion, Notion pouches are interfaced. It's not a super thick interfacing, but it's not a super thin one. It's got body to it and they're lined. I am wanting, I have another bag design. I've actually made one, but I'm gonna make it a couple more times to make sure that I got the pattern in my brain to where I won't have to keep stopping and looking for another type of bag and it will be interfaced and um, it won't have a zipper on it or a drawstring. It's the kind of bag that doesn't need either of those. And I also am working on a zipper bag that will be interfaced. So hopefully within the next month or so, maybe I'm going to say before Christmas bags come out, because you, you know there's going to be Christmas bags. There's going to be a lot of Christmas bags. Um, I want to have these two new bag designs out. They're not my designs. They're other people's designs. And I will credit them, of course, the way I do with these people. Um, but... They're just new bag designs. You know, I'm always making drawstring bags, which I personally love, but I know a lot of people don't like drawstring bags as much as they like zipper bags. So I want my shop to offer, I told Devin I was hoping to get like five or six different types of designs out so that there's a type of bag for everybody. And it's like on my Notion pouches, I want to start making some that's bigger and longer for people who have Tunisian hooks or who use knitting needles, things like that. So that they have an option to get a bigger Notions pouch and maybe even make some that are smaller, like that small, to just carry stitch markers and, and little folding scissors and uh, the little needles and stuff like that. I wanna have like a large variety of things in my shop for people. But yeah, that's all the bags that will be up tomorrow, plus there will be more Notion pouches because I'll be finishing them up in a little while. It is five o'clock here right now. So I know I'll be able to finish all of them up. I think I have like six of them. And all they gotta do is be sewn shut. I've already got the zipper sewn on there. So yeah, uh, if you're interested in that, just hop over to the Etsy shop. It'll be linked below. And um, at the end of the video, it'll be on the card at the end. 
uh, and check out the Halloween bags and get you one before they're all gone. But like I said, this is just half of them. Uh, hopefully this coming weekend I will have the other Halloween bags up and, and some of the autumn ones that's coming out. They I have three different autumn prints. Two are like pumpkins and leaves. They're actually, you can't see it too good, but they're stacked up right there. They're already pre-cut and everything. I just need to sew them together. And then this is the next one I got. Oh, I love this material. This is another one that I may have to go back and get more. Devin actually helped me pick this out. And I think he did a good job. He picked this out and the liner material. <laughs> he, lo he loves helping me and I love that he's that kind of guy. This is so pretty. Oh my gosh. Are you guys ready? I got a feeling this bag is going to sell really fast. Because it's like an elegant autumn one. I kind of want it. Well, I don't know how good you can see it. But it's teal. It's like this really beautiful teal color. Is that upside down? That's upside down. I'm sorry. With these pumpkins and leaves and... I don't know if you can see it, but there's like gold glittery details. And it's not the kind of glitter that comes off and gets stuck to everything. It's like paint or something. I don't know. I don't know anything about material making. But it's, it's not going to fall off and get all over your house. It's not that kind of glitter. It is beautiful though. Just that picture alone is beautiful. But there are a few other different pumpkins on there. That one by itself and these ones. It's just absolutely a beautiful material, I think. And that's the outside piece. And then Devin helped me pick out this color for the inside. Oh, it's not coming out at all the way it looks. It is so much prettier in real life. I would say it's like a caramel color. But I think they go really... Oh, how can I show this? <laughs> I'm not that good at this. I think they go really well together. This is a lot different color in real life. It's not showing up at all the way it is. And I think it's just because it's so overcast outside. I need lighting. i got to work on that. But yeah, I look really forward to making this. And like I said, I may have to go back to the store and buy some more of this just to make myself one. Because <laughs> this material is just so pretty. I can't even get over it. It is so pretty. And I looked at the Christmas material. They have it all out at Hobby Lobby. I already, I was going through there while Devin took this to get it cut. Because like I said, he loves helping me do stuff like that. Uh, he walked over there and hit the bell and everything. He just, he just loves doing stuff like that with me. But um, while he was getting it cut for me, I... Um, I mean, Jesse was looking at the Christmas material. They have it like separated out in a bin. And we were looking, and I was like, oh, I want this one, I want this one, I want this one. And they have one that's got cookies, Christmas cookies all over. It, and I'm making myself a project bag and notion pouch out of that because that's a big thing. I make Christmas cookies every year as gifts, like for um, Devin's family and my family. You know, each, each family gets a bag of homemade cookies. That's just how I do. I also make chocolate bark, if y'all know what that is. It's basically a bunch of melted chocolate with pretzels in it and uh sometimes like m&ms and stuff like that just to make it cute and then like i usually make it white chocolate or brown like milk chocolate and then i drizzle over it with colored um white chocolate <laughs> to you know red and green and stuff christmas colors i just love that that's one thing i've always loved doing is making candies and sweets and what's funny is i love making stuff like that but i don't really eat it i'm most definitely a savory person i love anything that's covered in salt <laughs> I do eat sweets every now and then, but I prefer salty things. The, like, the one sweet thing I love, no matter what, is fudge. I love fudge. I can eat fudge all day long. <laughs> love fudge. Especially peanut butter fudge and cookies and cream fudge. It's like the best fudge ever. <laughs> but yeah, that's the shop update and my rambling about holidays. There's all these bags back in here. I love all these Halloween prints. I love Halloween, as you guys can tell. <laughs> I was so excited about going trick-or-treating. I guess this is life. <laughs> this is the life part of the show if you're not interested. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next crochet talk, whatever kind of video I do. Because <laughs> you never know with me. It's random videos. But um, for Halloween, Jessie's going to be the Red Power Ranger. Uh, Kat, she's going with us because we take the last two years we've taken her with us just because it's easier for us. I mean, it's easier for them because we're already going with Jessie. So, and plus I love Cal, I love having her on her cat. <laughs> I know she's probably watching, but um, she's, I don't know if she's changed her mind. She wanted to be the pink ranger so she would match Jessie. And we're actually planning on buying her that costume. And then I'm gonna get the yellow ranger costume. I'm a little worried about it because it's kind of like spandex and I ain't exactly skinny, but hopefully it's the one with the skirt on it. <laughs> and Devin's gonna get the green ranger. So we're gonna all be power rangers and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, hoping. Unless Jesse changes his mind. He was going to be a firefighter and changes his mind. We were going to be Dalmatians. But we've already got his costume. It's in the closet. I went ahead and bought it because kids' costumes sell out a lot faster than grown-up ones. 
and uh, we'll be ordering ours from online anyways it's easier to get the right sizes from the internet <laughs> but um, yeah so we'll be going I've already I'm like a serious trick-or-treater what I'll be doing is I've already started looking no one's been posting them yet though but I always I look up on Facebook and stuff local trunk or treats around us and that's the first thing we do it's actually Halloween day Devin's taking that off for her, or taking that day off for work We'll be going to my sister's city because they do a daytime trick-or-treating around the square for the littler kids uh, just so it's safer, you know, it's during the day and the families can go and it's just safer for the little kids. Um, so we'll be doing that. That'll take a few hours because it did last year, I think, before that. We've done it all two years that Jesse's done it. Um, we'll trick-or-treat there and then we'll come back to our city and wait for Kat to get home because it's a school day this year. I think it's a Tuesday. And when she gets home, we're going to get help her get her costume on and all that and take pictures, of course, and poses because we're going to be Power Rangers. We're going to have cool poses. Uh, and then we're going to go to the, another city beside us, the bigger city, and trunk or treat because they have a bunch of big churches there that do big trunk or treat things. And you get like, you don't just get candy. You get like the little bags full of candy. <laughs> so I'm going to map that out and get the best route. I told you I'm very serious about this, and I'm already working on it. No one's posted on me yet, but when they do, I'm going to make a map. I'm going to try to get like a circular map of all the best trunk or treats. Do that and then come back to our town. By the time we get back to our town, it'll be like walking the streets trick or treat time. And there are two subdivisions in our town that are serious Halloween town or trunk or what am I saying? Trick or treat towns. There's one subdivision that is the rich people. <laughs> I know that sounds horrible, but they're like the big million dollar homes and they're like the full size candy bar hander outers and the little bags of stuff hander outers so we'll definitely be hitting that neighborhood and then there's another neighborhood that's closer to inner city and that whole street like gets together i think it's called main street and they know it's more street i think and it's um trigger treat more street i think is what they're little, they put signs up and everything and the whole subdivision decorates and hands out candy between a certain time they have sign hanging up i guess that's so that people don't bug them at, after certain times but we're gonna go trigger treat that and then just hit some of the random subdivisions on our way home and hopefully get a lot of candy uh, my mom growing up she always brought pillowcases with us in our car because when our little buckets filled up we each had a pillowcase to dump them in and then we'd go get more candy so i'm gonna do that with the kids this year i'm gonna make sure to have two pillowcases in the car in case because jesse's little bucket he picked out is like that big it's tiny it's not even a pumpkin size it's it's the power ranger's head so he's definitely gonna need more because he all last last two years he's gotten a ton of candy so i'm sure he will this year since he'll actually be walking up to doors with us and saying trick or treat we've been practicing i have him say it all the time <laughs> and he can say it and he, he's so polite he'll say thank you and all that and i love the way he says thank you very much <laughs> But I'm so excited for Halloween this year. I cannot wait to take in trigger treating because he's going to actually do it this, this year himself. Because, you know, the first year he was born, he was five months old, almost six months, like one day from being six months old. So we'll just say six months old. Couldn't do anything. You know, I carried him the whole time. And then last year, he could walk and all that, but he was still, you know, he's a little baby. He was a year and a half old. He, um... We pushed him in the stroller mostly, and I think he actually fell asleep <laughs> while we were trick-or-treating. But um, so this year is his first legit year doing it himself, so I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to take him. <laughs> I'm sure you can tell because I'm, like, super excited. <sighs> but, yeah, that's Halloween. <laughs> uh, other life update is my mom had her surgery last Wednesday. Um, she was supposed to be there at 10, but they got a cancellation, so she ended up going earlier in the day. I think 8 o'clock is when she got there. Me and Jesse went, and we sat with them the whole time. You know, you got to fill out all the paperwork, and they put her into a room. They put her in a room just in case of something going wrong, and she had to dis she needed to stay the night or something, which didn't end up happening. Her surgery went well. Um, they did everything they had to do, and she got she didn't get to go home that day, but it was later in the day because she had blood pressure issues. But they finally did send her home. So she's been home since uh, Wednesday night. And she's in a lot of pain, obviously, because she's had her chest cut open a little bit, um, which is just the skin, because she has a pacemaker slash defibrillator, and they were having to change out part of that. So it wasn't like an invasive, um, I just got a text message, sorry. <laughs> it's just my phone card being renewed. <laughs> but um, whatever I was saying, it wasn't like an invasive surgery. They didn't have to do the wires or nothing. They just had literally had to change it apart and sew her back up. So, uh She's still hurting, but she was able to go to church today, so she's that's a good thing. You know, she's getting up and moving around. She can't lift anything for, I think, four to six weeks is what they said. And um, 
something else. I can't remember. She's not supposed to like move, move her arm a lot, lift it up and all that until that heals. You know, they don't want her reopening the stitches and all that. But yeah, so she's doing good for that. So I appreciate everybody's thoughts and prayers over that because I was really worried. You know, uh, when someone has heart problems and stuff, it's scary when they go into any operation because, you know, when you have a heart problem, things can affect you a lot differently, medicines and stuff. So I'm naturally, I was terrified <laughs> that something bad was going to happen because I'm the kind of person who always thinks of the worst possible thing because then if something less than the worst possible thing happens, it's a bonus. <laughs> but um, everything was fine with her. I didn't end up getting to stay at the hospital the entire time because Devin, you know, he works second shift. So I had to be home by a certain time. We only have the one car now. We're actually planning on, get, planning on getting him his own car next year, early next year. And then I will be able to just drive around. I mean, Jesse can do whatever we want during the day. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so she came home and all that. The next morning we took her flowers. Uh, Jesse carried them in. It was really cute. And we took her some caramel apples because she likes those. <laughs> Yeah, and let's see here. What else did we do? We didn't do much anything Friday. I was I actually meant to film a weekend vlog and completely forgot to film anything. <laughs> I like doing weekend vlogs uh, on the months that I'm not vlogging every day, which I'm planning on doing that in October. It's going to be Vlogtober. I always, when I say that, I want to say it like a vampire word. Vlogtober or something. I don't know if I said that right. But yeah, and then yesterday was Devin's sister's birthday, his youngest sister. That's where he's at right now. They're having like a birthday party. Um, I didn't go because I have to do work. <laughs> it's a really weird thing that I'm having to do work by filming and editing and sewing and stuff. But it is my work now. I'm making money off of it, so it's a job. And I need to treat it like a job. You know, I need to carve out time for it. And about the only day that I can do that is Sundays because it's when Devin's usually off of work and he can take Jesse to play or something. He was going to take him to a park today, but it's rain, been raining all day. I didn't look at the weather. I didn't know it was supposed to rain all day. I guess this might be some of Florence or something maybe coming into us. I don't know. I haven't looked. <laughs> but um, so, yeah. So, I guess Sundays will be my filming day unless I can film when Jesse's napping. But, yeah. I don't think there's any other life updates that I can think of. So, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm going to go ahead and hop off of here. Uh, I thank you all guys, all for watching. I'm so close to 2,000 subscribers, which is absolutely crazy to me. And uh, I can't believe that that's, that many people would, like, watch me. It's kind of weird, like, creepy, you know, you know, when you think about it. It's a lot of people. <laughs> but um, I'm going to be having a big giveaway when I hit 2,000. Might actually be a little after because I'm at, last time I looked today was 1913. And that's not very many people. You know, in the next week or two, I could have that. So I got to get prepared, you know, get going on those uh, giveaway items for that. And um, I already found some material that I want to make bags for. I'm going to make one bag for me to keep as like commemorative, I can't say that word, of my 2,000 people. And then for the winner to get one. And it's a really cute bag with like balloons and confetti on it, like a party bag material. <laughs> and then probably yarn and stuff. I don't know. Um, I want to just have a big giveaway and you know appreciate you guys for subscribing and watching me liking and commenting and sharing and all that stuff but anyways I gotta hop off here because Devin just texted and said they're on their way back so I gotta get off here before and clean up the stuff before Jessica gets in here but I will see you guys in the next video and thank you again so much for subscribing and all, all your awesome comments and stuff it makes me so happy and the fair stuff all y'all's comments on the fair you know um, my mandala blanket and all that like, I literally had me crying a few times because um, I was so proud. I'm about to cry thinking about it right now. But um, I was so proud of getting that ribbon and then having so many other people proud of me. <sighs> I don't want to cry. I just, it made me feel good. <laughs> and I appreciate everybody's um, awesome comments. But I'm going to get off here before I cry some more. <laughs> um, and I will see you guys in the next video, which will hopefully be soon. And thank you so much for watching and like this video if you liked it, share it if you think someone else will like it, and subscribe if you're not, and hit the bell if you want notifications from me. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.